started off as children those with shitty can catch, moms. Those 13 year can catch some lead, too. You shouldn't, mm. shouldn't be robbing anybody. Yeah, let's see. Mean, I don't want to well, start, now you it to It sounds like a, old it old sounds old. like an intergenerational protection racket. I don't know what that means, but I co-sign. <laughs> yeah, it does sound like it, though. I mean, that's a good way to describe it. Women, are, women really not having that, ch- that many children like they, like they used to. Some they women are. No, nah, no. Nah, back in the day, like, like my, like for instance, my, um, my, my stepfather's family. It's like eight of them. Um, my, um, like all the families of the old people that are like in their seventies now. It's like eight, nine, ten. At the least five of them. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, but a lot of my mother in the house, though. So. My they mother had, had twelve like, brothers and sisters. Yeah, yeah. It was, it was yeah, crazy. but nowadays. A girl having three kids, that's like a girl having 10 kids nowadays. Yeah. Like, they don't have many. they don't have many children like they used to back then. Yeah. Yo, yo, I, I'm going to roll out, but can I, let me say this real quick. I'm going to roll out. Those five cops, right? You smashing Mossy? I mean, Brown Sugar? <laughs> oh, shit. Oh, my God. Why are you asking Mossy first? <laughs> Stray bullets, man. We just did a story about a stray bullet. You, you firing strays in here, man. Damn. Um, nah, I'm smashing the murderers. <laughs> oh my god! Hey, how do you man. say how do you say Freudian slip in Spanish, man? Nah, he, you know, he just he just he, he, he that wasn't no Freudian slip. He just he banging on Marcy, man. That man, let Marcy, let Marcy, man. You know, I don't mess with you about that no more, man. I'm trying to, let, I'm trying to, I'm trying to lead show, show leadership by letting them off the hook for that. Y'all keep throwing strays his way, man. And it's all, yeah. it's all good. Spanish, that would be El that. Diso de Sneeko. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, I don't know how you get mousy and I brown sugar mixed that. up. That's two different names. Yeah, nah. We gonna, I ain't gonna kind of look the same, man. man. We will let Marcy live, man. Let's leave Marcy alive. Crime in Memphis has many people just fed up. It certainly does, but one man is so tired of it, he's moving. WRG's April Thompson talked with the business owner who says for him it is the only solution. Growing up, uh, my family visited down here, and, um, and I-, I love Memphis. Stephen Kahn remembers the things that brought him to Memphis back in 2001. Memphis was laid back. And I-, I love music and I love, I'm single, I love going out, and, I, and uh, Memphis just fit Man. all that criteria. <laughs> it's why he started and grew his medical testing. He ain't looking for what you got. The, American way. the climate was great Man, in Memphis to get nurture and, grow, and grow what we were doing. But over the years, you got he says, dick. things changed. I got robbed actually he behind the gay. counter the first time. Uh, oh, there was a, a, listen to this, please. No, he ain't gay. His boyfriend's gay. The climate gay. was great in Memphis to nurture and grow and and grow what we were doing. But over the years, he says things changed. I got robbed actually behind the counter the first time, uh, where there was a gun involved, and uh, some some kid with a hoodie and mask on. I could see down the barrel of this gun right in my face. I mean, he wasn't going to miss if he pulled the trigger. That was 2007. In 2012, crime called again. I stepped outside to get something out of my car, and there was a fellow right behind the one of these col- fellow columns just waiting for me. And uh, he caught me from behind, and I could feel the gun. Uh, he had the gun in his in his belt, and I, I could feel the pistol. And a year later, a similar assault. And uh, so that at at that point, it was getting kind of numerous. And I had f- family and friends, <laughs> mostly family. <laughs> Uh, who said, Dad, you need to get out of there. Get out of that location. <laughs> I mean... <sighs> I told my mama the same thing. Oh, were your mama still in Memphis? Yeah, I tell her every day, get out. Oh, wow. I told her to sell the house and get the hell out. Wow. She don't want to leave? She thinking about it. Okay. Yeah, man. Uh, this is this sounds like rough. This sounds rough, man. I mean, he could have had a heart attack. Like all these three incidents, he could have literally had a fucking heart attack. Get out of that place. But he stayed, putting up extra security. But the crime didn't stop. Had two more this summer, um, and that was just the tipping point f- for me. The guy knocked me down out here in the parking lot. 
and uh, and just was wailing on me with his fists. And uh, I was convinced that the next thing he was going to do was pull a gun or a knife. So after 22 years. <laughs> like, I mean, come on, man. What are we talking about? We're talking about some fucking goddamn skateboard, 30-year-old skateboarder that's fucking reckless driving and got pulled over and ran from the cops and then got in a fight with them. Is that what we're talking about with all this going on in this city? Yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah, man. That's why we suck. <laughs> so after 22 years, he is leaving Memphis for Franklin, Tennessee. I needed to do something that would get me out of the line of fire. This what I'm so to speak. keep it. He says he's seen too many cases of innocent people trying to help the city become victims, like former chamber lead Bill Trenary. He was the guy who was uh, g given the task of promoting Memphis, and he got shot and killed one night, one Friday night, walking home. Those who are pushing Memphis. <laughs> I remember this story. No, I remember this story. I did this. This was like maybe five years ago or four years ago. Yeah, this guy, he was, yeah, he's exactly what he just said. Yeah. Um, Memphis, like he was Memphis' biggest cheerleader. Like he, that was his job to be a cheerleader for Memphis. And he's bringing all types of businesses and, and convincing other gliders to come build stuff in Memphis and to do stuff for Memphis's troubled youth and don't 